Hello, denizens of the internet. My name's Paper, and welcome to Paper Draws. Uh, thanks for joining me today. So right now I'm drawing, or was, <laughs> this is a previous recording. I was drawing a uh, drawing for my Ghibli print, which I also made the stickers. Um, but in this, I just opened up, opened up a Photoshop file, just kind of doodled away. And uh, right now I'm working on the structure of the bathhouse and spirited away. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit to you guys about Ghibli movies and why they are so fantastic and my favorites and why. And I'd also like to know your favorites. So let's start. So it's funny, I think everyone has had like their experience if they like Ghibli films, you know, if they watch most if not all, um, that they had like their first Ghibli movie. So my first Ghibli movie was uh, Kiki's Delivery Service and I remember watching it in elementary school and I saw it on the really really small like tiny little screen in the corner of my classroom, you know, I, I don't know if all y'all remember but um, you know, but when they had projectors, you know, where uh, it wouldn't be like from your computer, you know, having your cables connecting to a uh, projector that way before we used to have like the reversible light projectors where you'd have this table with this light come up and then you can only put transparent sheets on it and then, you know, the teachers would draw and on it with marker and then the light would reflect onto the white panel like um, in the front of the classroom. So we didn't, you know, we weren't like big TVs. They are pretty small. So I remember really squinting my eyes and my vision is pretty bad. So I remember seeing Kiki's Delivery Service for the first time in like elementary school. It was in like a super small corner. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm, I, I was like mind blown. I was like, what is this? Oh, huh? Like there's a girl who's a witch, you know, animation obviously didn't really occur to me. And uh, you know, I definitely appreciate it now, especially since they're still continuing that tradition, which is great. I mean, just that's just anime, um, not in general, but you know, a lot of it uh, does have that hand-drawn, you know, traditional style still, you know, even though there's CGI integrated and all that stuff. So. I was like blown away that, you know, there's this girl, almost kind of like Pokemon, where, you know, they go on their own adventure trying to find themselves, but she was a witch and she wasn't like those creepy, scary witches you'd see like in Halloween, nothing like that. It was just a girl who wanted to find her way and it was, that's just her, her rite of passage, I guess, of into witchhood slash adulthood, you know, and, and then as the story progresses, she just really matures, um, or matures more as a character and, you know, sees the good and the bad between, you know, people and all kinds of stuff, you know, and she just finds herself and it's so cool. So I really liked that movie a lot, but I think my, like, my, I probably, I'd say, like, my biggest favorite is um, Whisper of the Heart, and that was released in 1995, so it's a pretty old movie. Uh, compared to the other ones, you know, uh, that was, I think, around the time when uh, Castle in the Sky uh, came out, uh, Princess Mononoke I'm sure was real close around that time, uh, and funny enough, it's not like crazy extraordinary, <laughs> it's actually very ordinary uh, from, you know, Mizaki's traditional works, but uh, I really enjoyed Wish for the Heart because it's about this girl who is a writer, and she's only in like, what, she's like 14. She's like technically here, she's barely gone to high school and she's so pressured to decide what she wants to do and at the time I think I may, may have been a few years older than 14 when I saw it. Uh, I actually saw The Cat Returned which is like an indirect kind of mythical sequel to um, to Whisper of the Heart but you know uh, that one's definitely not in grounded in reality as opposed to Whisper of the Heart which is. So she's trying to write this book and she gets inspiration by following this cat in an alleyway into this um, this little shop that has the Baron, which is this cat character in Cat Returns. <laughs> um, and she just decides she wants to write a book. So, oh, and on the way she meets this cool guy who like makes violins and he wants to make violins and she is inspired by him and you know what he wants to do and his aspirations that she wants to find her way to you know so I could definitely relate to that and I, I really enjoyed that movie and I remember pressuring my friends to watch it and um 
I know one of them fell asleep <laughs> during that. It's actually very normal in terms of a Miyazaki, a, you know, a, a known Miyazaki movie, you know, like Spirit Away or House of the Castle or Ponyo. You know, those are definitely way out of, way into fantasy, which is great. I definitely love his work, his fantasy work, but uh, Wish Bell Heart has like a special place because I think it was at a time I felt very, very unsure, you know, and in this movie, you really made me feel like I, st I mean, I won't say still had time, but I still had, had some ways to go, you know, and, and I was very inspired by this, this main you know, protagonist and I enjoyed her a lot and she was super uh, sassy, you know, and she you know, ends up like in the, one of the, the violin dude, because, you know, again, she's very much aspiring to find something that she loves as much as he finds his passion in making violins. So the book she writes is about the Baron, and the Baron is this brown, orange colored tabby cat, but he's in this full, full blown suit, and it's a, like a light cream color suit, and he, he has like a hat, and I think he had a cane too. And has he has like beautiful large emerald eyes and she's first when she's looking outside at the store she sees how beautiful his eyes are and you know is super curious about like the figure itself and so the store owner explains to her that he he is the he's the Baron and he came in a pair so he had another another with him and they were supposed to be together forever and then as something happened, and he, uh, the owner explains the story of, of two lovers who owned one of each cat, and how one was separated from the other during war, and they never saw each other again, and that creates this whole world in in this girl's mind, and it becomes her huge drive and inspiration of this book that she decides to write, and it was it was really interesting to see the world in her mind like how she began to write it and how in the film it integrates that into her reality uh, and how it, like it affects her dreams and you know and it was really inspiring because there's just a lot a lot to this movie I really enjoyed as subtle as everything was and how ordinary everything seemed it seemed very much like something I could very I could feel I very much relate to and I super, super duper enjoyed that movie, and if you guys have never had the opportunity to watch that movie, I would definitely recommend Whisper of the Heart. If you want something a lot more fun and like lighthearted, um, there is The Cat Returns, which again I said is like a sequel, and that was made I think in the early 2000s, maybe, maybe like 2005 or so? And uh, it's directed by someone completely different, so Miyazaki didn't direct that. Uh, and so the stylizing and the animation is is different, but it's it was that was the first movie I saw before I even knew *Wizards of the Heart*, and I thought it was a lot of fun. And it's about this girl, this high school girl, who follows again a black cat into this um, alleyway, but instead she finds a small shop with this character named the Baron, who looks just like the one in *Wizards of the Heart*, but he is alive and he is real. Um, they don't talk about the pair that he came with, unfortunately. They didn't expand on that. I wish they did. Uh, because she was like this beautiful, like, regal-looking Persian-like cat with a beautiful wedding gown and like a huge hat. And I remember seeing the visuals for it in Whisper of the Heart and it was so cool. But they didn't expand on that. And um, this is really silly adventure and she gets kind of tangled into this like cat empire society. And it just, it gets like real crazy. It's really funny. So I enjoyed the music of that a lot, but that's just kind of like a fun side side quest almost uh, to, uh, you know, Whisper the Heart. And again, the fantasy element is like totally out there. She's in a whole nother world, all these cats. And then like one of the cats like is wedding her. It was just, and she turns to a cat. Like, I, I don't know. It gets really, it gets really funky, but that's fun too, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so let's talk about one of my favorites of Miyazaki. I mean, Howl's Moving Castle is probably... Oh man, that's hard to decide. I'm stuck. I'm like always bound between Howl's Moving Castle and Spirit Away. Uh, I mean, I could like, I do like both for sure. But I think Spirit Away has a kind of a little, little trove in my heart as well. I remember owning the VHS uh, when it came out and I was so excited. I watched it, I don't know, maybe two or three more times. And 
I enjoyed that movie so much. Speaking of which, uh, I'm since I'm uh, you know telling my favorite movies, uh, including Spirited Away. Uh, I'm right now. I'm drawing the line art for the bathhouse again for Spirited Away. I actually there was no like turnaround model for the bathhouse, so I had a I just went on DeviantArt and I just searched Spirited Away bathhouse and someone did like a 3D uh, paper structure. And I just use that as reference to draw my thing. But that's pretty awesome. I'm not very handy with my hands, so seeing that in like real life is pretty cool. So I'm glad that person was able to do it and I was able to reference it because it really did help in my referencing. Because I even looked in the um, Ghibli uh, Spirit Away art book and I there was no sufficient turnaround, like not as not as accurate as this one that I found on DeviantArt, which I thought was interesting. But um, yeah, I'm referencing that and there's a lot of straight lines and it just gets real hard and real confusing and it took me a lot longer than I should have. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, sorry, this video, or maybe fortunately, this video only features like the line drawing of uh, the bathhouse as well as I think I, think I drew Kappas. Um, so there's that. So I know we all like Miyazaki, of course that's, that's a given. Uh, or at least appreciate what he has worked on and what he has given us as an audience uh, animation and, and his way of storytelling and of course I'm sure as you all know a lot of his films have female protagonists which when I think about it is pretty rare uh, especially considering he himself uh, as a director is a male so it's interesting to me that he has a lot of his movies have main star female protagonists which is great because it's definitely one of those movies that I relate related to and I'm sure many of you guys did as well whether you're male or female and I really appreciated that about his work and even if he intended it or not intended it that's just kind of I don't think that was even in the forefront of his mind um, I think, yeah, I'm not really sure why he decided to have female protagonists, uh, but I definitely really, I just think that's so cool. Uh, you know, since at the time as well, we had Disney movies, which were fine, uh, but it always felt kind of, maybe, it did focus, again, also on female protagonists, but it felt less about the adventure as opposed to the roles or how they're how you know Disney characters especially female are subjugated to having like princess like roles uh, so Ghibli films definitely were were you know ahead of the curb on that uh, you know for characters like Nausicaa and uh, you know My Neighbor Totoro and you know of course the you know uh, their really popular films that I mentioned earlier uh, and Princess Mononoke, I mean, she wasn't even a main character, but she was such a strong character, uh, cause in his movies, I feel like they have a role, whether it's an ideology or a conflict, uh, you know, since a lot of his films, not, I mean, I won't say all of them, but a lot have to do with, uh, nature and, you know, for instance, his bigger hits like Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind and Castle in the Sky and Princess Mononoke. They all had to do with nature versus man and how they could work together. And uh, I know he uh, himself, as an he is an advocate of um, preserving nature and the importance of it. And I think that is also super cool. And the fact that his films that he's he that he's directed himself, he has made it a point to make it uh, like less than ten percent CGI. And then, you know, the other 90% would have to be hand-drawn. And I think at the Ghibli Museum, which I unfortunately had not had the chance to visit yet. I know Axis has, and I'm sure she... And I saw, if you saw in her previous video, I have a link right here, that she would... That she saw the Ghibli Museum, which is super awesome. And um, I, yeah, I'm i sure there were, like, tons of stuff to see. But uh the last I read about it, I remember uh, it was when Ponyo came out, though, that there was a display case just for Ponyo. Let me know, Axis, if you saw it, that um, the Ponyo had this huge uh, had this huge case, and this case was just full of like drawings, drawing after drawing after drawing, like stacks and stacks. Like it looked almost cartoony how many stacks of paper there were. 
uh, and that was just all like animation cues and all, all drawn by his team and, and I'm sure and a lot of it Miyazaki himself I believe he did draw a lot of like the waves and the wave animation which is crazy because the waves go insane in that Ponyo movie it is crazy um but the fact that he won't rely on uh, CGI as much because uh, I think a lot of studios see it as a cheaper option and you know especially Disney now Disney no longer uh relies on digital animation now we use cgi and rigging and all that stuff and that's because i believe it's cheaper it's cheaper and you can make sequels easy you know and uh some people uh, i feel some people here don't in the u.s at least don't really care as long as you have things moving i don't know how to explain it i think it's just in terms of animation how animation is perceived for like a a younger audience like for kids so it doesn't matter whether or not it's 3d 2d whichever combination paper cut stop motion you know all that stuff it doesn't matter as long as it can appeal to children and that is the case but also not the case because of course as jubilee shown it can be enjoyed by everyone and anyone uh, just as animation is in itself uh, an enjoyable medium and I'm not, I'm not bashing on CG there's nothing wrong with CGI or anything like that it's just I, I, th I just think that's why he may not like CGI because he believes the foundation of animation is through the hand and through flow flow of the hand and that's not something you can quite get with CG uh, so I think that's really interesting um, yeah, and even anime is doing CGI, and me and X has had a very interesting discussion of, like, why it doesn't look very good as opposed to uh, CGI here, but I th I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's just the stylization of translating, like, an anime look into 3D space that makes it look so weird. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. You can let me know what you guys think, um, but... I think that's that's just some of the things that makes uh, you know Ghibli Studios really cool, and he works day in and day out, and he just it's funny that Miyazaki he's I remember multiple interviews he would say like he would quit after doing this movie, I'm gonna quit after this movie, I'm gonna quit after this movie. Uh, he's still directing, and I think he will he's doing one that's gonna be released in like 2020. <laughs> So he's still tirelessly working, going through all the cigarettes, just probably right as we speak, just drawing the storyboards and stuff, and just just drawn away, and and that is that's that's kind of interesting to think about. So there are movies uh, I'm sure you guys haven't heard of. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, there are. Instead of like the main four or five that got tons of, of press and had celebrity voice actors, I think like Anne Hathaway and Christian Bale. I think he voiced Hal in Hal's Women Castle in the English dub, and I'm not sure about Anne Hathaway. I think she voiced um, the main character, female protagonist in uh, The Cat Returns, but I don't remember. But there, you know, there's, that's kind of always uh, been a thing, and um, yeah. But yes, uh, I think especially with the new wave of. Uh, animation and streaming services like Netflix, you know, gives people the opportunity to see more cartoons that could be aimed toward adults, sure, you know, with darker themes and topics, um, but that it can be enjoyed by, you know, older people or adults as well, you know, not just children. The medium isn't strictly, you know, for children as, you know, people who animate are adults <laughs> for the most part, as far as I know. You know, who animate uh, for studios, they are adults. So, you know, uh, I think animators who work on things like that and illustrators and all the other people that, that are part of those studios all have this devotion and love to their craft, you know, which is animation. And Ghibli is definitely not, uh, is no exception to that. Uh, maybe I'm guessing a little too much in Whisper of the Heart, but I have to say that it nails subtleties uh since you know it is based in real life that i think we can all relate to um i feel that the girl when she f you know figures out this whole narrative narrative in her mind when she you know learns about the baron is kind of how inspiration hits people uh how it kind of manifests in their thoughts and in their dreams and for her she's restless until she can you know sit down and like write this book you know, and it, it also highlights that, you know, the 
the the good things and the failures of of pursuing things so so you know abashedly and i think it's just kind of one of the great subtle things about that film as well you know not only does it kind of articulate the way that uh this she how she sees the world and how she gets inspiration i feel that's very akin to real life at least for me you know how i how i get inspiration and how i you know think about things and, and i daydream a lot <laughs> maybe a little too much uh but i relate to it very much even now probably more so even now you know as we navigate this this uh you know weird thing we call life uh trying to figure out our our own way and Mizaki is very familiar uh, with this with this thought and that has been illustrated throughout many of his movies um, whether the protagonists are trying to find what they are who are, where they're going who they, who who they'll be or the characters who are already very much in their ways and very solid and will stand their ground uh, it's just super remarkable the characterization that he can portray in all of his characters you know not just his main characters so I think that's the one of the neatest things about Miyazaki and also he was that I believe Nausicaa didn't actually count as a Ghibli movie it wasn't it wasn't created it was created before Ghibli was created was made so their first Ghibli movie was Castle in the Sky I believe so Nausicaa was his own personal work uh I have yet to read his graphic novel. I really want to read it. I should definitely do that. I think you guys should too. And um, I haven't watched the movie in also in a real long time, so I think I, I'd have to watch that. But um, I remember it. Uh, it's just a crazy, a crazy epic again versus man versus nature with this female protagonist who uh, is very set on her beliefs and uh, is just going against themes and conflict of nature and man. And I think it's neat and that's a movie I definitely should return to uh as well as like tale of earthsea which i don't believe was directed by him either um arietti i don't think that was directed by him <laughs> i think it was a uh, it was another director but um i i do want to watch uh those are some of the movies that i haven't watched that i have that i want to so yeah, what movies, what was your guys' uh, Ghibli movie, your breakout Ghibli film? But let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how you got to it and how you saw it. Uh, share my thoughts, sharing your thoughts, that'd be cool. Uh, and also, actually, this weekend, um, I'll be going with Axis and some friends to watch Mary and the Witch's Flower, which is by Studio Panak. And that's like the new, the, the new break, you know, Ghibli film, but not really because it's not by Miyazaki and it's not by Ghibli Studios. It's actually by uh, a fellow, a director, uh, his name's uh, Yon, Yon Bayashi. And I believe, yeah, he, oh yeah, he um, directed Arietti and Marnine when Marnine was there. Uh, that gay, that gay. <laughs> That movie's kind of gay, by the way, but in the best way. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun time. Um, you guys should watch Marnine Was There. It was, it's very touching and uh, kind of it looks spooky when I think about it. And kind of like, what? You know, I was I was confused and dumbfounded and awestruck and sad at the same time. It was really weird conflict of emotions. Um but it, it was a good film. I enjoyed that. But uh, director Yon Bayashi uh, was was the director of that. But he uh, branched off, I think, after that film's release uh, to join another guy who worked previously at Studio Ghibli on Studio Panak. So we're going to watch that this weekend. I think it's one of those fancy Fathom events like you have to buy real expensive tickets for, which I already bought, but so it's too late. I have, we're going to go. We're going to go watch. <laughs> and uh, let you know what my thoughts are on that. I, I don't have any expectations, uh, but I'm excited, so maybe that is already an expectation. Um, I won't compare it to Ghibli because it is a different studio, even though I'm, sh I'm sure there will be some accents and touches to it as far as the animation and the artwork goes, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, so just finishing that up. Uh, fortunately, I don't have the color version, but or of this uh, this particular drawing, but I do have the finished product. So there you go. 
And I hope you guys have a great day. Hope you don't mind me rambling off of why I like Ghibli so much, because we all like Ghibli, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later. Paper over and out. <laughs>